Hey everyone, this is Jose for On Tour in one of the most important cities in American history, the city of brotherly love. It's said that this was the first industrial city and at one point it was the capital of this country. On today's tour, we'll take a walk through the old city to experience the history that created a nation. So let's go on tour and explore Philadelphia. the city of Philadelphia. On this tour, I decided to do something a little different and take the train from New Jersey into Philly, the Patco train. The Patco train is a speed line that crosses over the Ben Franklin Bridge directly into City Hall. What I love most about trains is enjoying the scenery you get from the window seat before going underground into the subway. From the train window, you see the skyline and endless flow of the Delaware River. I can't help but marvel at the beautiful views of Philadelphia, a grand start for the day to come. Our tour starts in Center City with one of the most important buildings in all of Philadelphia, City Hall. No matter what area of Center City you're in, you always see the building in the distance. I love the design of City Hall. It's the tallest and biggest masonry building on the planet. And speaking about love, right across the street from City Hall is the world famous Love Park. The street behind Love Park takes us directly to the art museum. Here, we have a building as old as City Hall, the Philadelphia Art Museum. The museum is a bucket list destination for fans wanting to recreate that famous Rocky scene running up the front steps. And you see the tourists at the Rocky Monument taking that photo of the legend Stallone created. Philadelphia was the first city to have a museum, so it's only natural that they have one of the most recognizable museums in the world. With over 200,000 pieces of unique art, it's a must do when in Philly. As you climb the steps and look across the Ben Franklin Parkway, you see the City Hall building pointing directly at the Art Museum, a beacon of independence. Here in Philly, this guy's everywhere. How can I come to Philly and not talk about Benjamin Franklin? I mean, the guy's on the $100 bill. So he put me on a quest to find out why this is still Franklin City. The District of Old City. This is probably the area that gets the most traction where people come from all over the world to see Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell. The iconic American symbol that rang when the Founding Fathers read the Declaration. On the other side is the National Constitution Museum. The museum is a host to many kinds of speeches from town halls to presidential debates. 
it's been a staple as a museum and a place of political gatherings. Inside the building, we see souvenirs of the Constitution and the Declaration. We also continue seeing Ben Franklin. He's known as Philadelphia's most famous citizen. Ben Franklin was a leader and an innovator, always pushing for the next big thing. He was the original postmaster and at 23, started his own printing shop, creating the Pennsylvania Gazette newspaper. As we continue, we come across one of the oldest alleys in America, Elfrith's Alley. The alley is preserved from the days of the 13 colonies. It still has the traditional colony flags and British flags, making you feel like you're in colonial times. The streets and buildings are narrow, and you see how conservative the colonists were with space and design. Nearby, we have the Betsy Ross House. Betsy is credited with creating the flag of the 13 colonies, the first icon to the newly formed country of the United States of America. So these are the things I love being in the city. The ambience, the loudness, everything is just so much more amplified. Let's take a moment to enjoy the walking trail as we stroll along the Schuylkill River. The Schuylkill River, a river that flows along the city, a beautiful river that connects to the rest of Pennsylvania. The Schuylkill River is one of two important rivers in Philadelphia, the other being the Delaware River. The river's most significant role was during the Industrial Age, where the river was inhabited by the working class families. The families built neighborhoods to remain close to the factories. The overpopulation of houses increased its pollution and it became one of the first rivers to get restoration treatment. As I take a seat in a nearby bench, I pause to think about Pennsylvania's river system. Whether Susquehanna, Lehigh, Delaware, or Schuylkill, somehow each river leads right back to the coal mines. On this busy day, I call my brother so we can enjoy lunch and finally settle the debate on who is Philly's king of cheesesteaks. There's nothing like Philly cheesesteaks. Oh, right, look at that smile. For a city that's built on history, it has one of the hippest and most vibrant areas in all of Philly, South Street. At the gates of South Street, you see the giant sculptures walking in unison and harmony. It would be a disservice if I didn't speak about street art in Philly. Philadelphia has statues everywhere, and in every corner you see a mural. So much so that it's become the mural capital of the world. But let's calm it down a bit. I decided to visit Ray Street Pier, enjoying the serene view under the Ben Franklin Bridge. From here, you get to see the neighboring state of New Jersey. This is the side of the Delaware River, which was the landing point of William Penn, the founding father of Pennsylvania.
As we proceed with our tour, we journey to Rittenhouse Square. The square is one of five original designs laid out by William Penn, with City Hall being the biggest of the city square designs. On this cold winter day, the crowd is alive and enjoying the sunshine in the park. It's one of Philadelphia's most popular parks, and it's right in the middle of some of the most sought after neighborhoods. There's so much to take in when touring Philly, going from old city to new areas and cultures, you truly do go on a grand adventure. And at the heart of Philly's Delaware River is the site of Penn's Landing. You hear laughter from the Ferris wheel and ice skating ring, right in the site of where William Penn arrived in the 1600s. To make Philly the first city of innovation, he created the blueprint grid system to design the city's layout. It was then imitated by many other large cities. Philly's addendum to the American story just keeps growing with groundbreaking pages that contain history and personality, captivating anyone in love with the American story. And this is Valley Forge. Valley Forge is about 23 miles outside of Philadelphia, but an important connection to the city. This is where George Washington camped with his military for about six months during the American Revolution. Before our tour comes to a close, I wanted to venture out into Valley Forge. This site played an important role to Philadelphia's history. General George Washington came to this place after a series of defeating battles with the British. The British occupied Philadelphia, so the general and his Continental Army camped out in Valley Forge. They maintained close enough visibility to Philly, but remained distant enough to avoid surprise attacks. The army encampments lasted around six months during Pennsylvania's harshest winters. It wasn't until Washington appointed military officer Frederick Wilhelm Baron von Steuben that the army came back as a fighting force, which many say was the precursor and birthplace of the modern army. Valley forges over 3,000 acres of land to explore, giving you a reflection of what they face in the battlefields. If you want to take a trip through history, then look no further. Philadelphia pops right out of the textbooks to immerse you in the story that became the United States of America. In this city, it still has a colonial feel of when the great leaders spoke the manuscript, the legacy, the foundation, to create a nation. This is Jose for On Tour. If you like what you've seen today, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share. If you want to know more about the places I've been to, please see the links below. Until next time.